Hello everyone, my name is Abby Bliss White and welcome to my channel. I am so excited because it is Fragrance Friday and I'm so excited to share a new perfume discovery with you today. This is a brand that I've had my eyes on for a bit. It is exclusive to Violet Grey and I have just been so curious about Perfume Head. And honestly, there is not a whole lot of information on this niche brand that was created by Daniel Patrick Giles. And this is sort of a whoa brand for me. I am super excited to share this brand with you. And I was also able to score some samples of the seven fragrances that are in Perfume Head. So what I thought I would do today is just sort of walk you through the two that I picked up. There was a little magical combination that I got convinced upon getting and then also kind of walk you through my impressions of the rest of the line and give you some more info about the background of the brand. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about perfume head, then let's go ahead and get started. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to be talking about this brand today and I do have to share that I had been looking at these perfumes online at Violet Grey. Right now, Perfume Head is exclusive to Violet Grey, which makes sense because the brand is basically an ode to the city of Los Angeles. So, so Daniel Patrick Giles, the founder of Perfume Head, has a background in the fashion and beauty world. He's been in that industry for 20 plus years and always had been fascinated by fragrance and had always wanted to create his own line through the lens of an Angelina. And being someone who has lived in Los Angeles twice, I have to say I think he nailed the Angelino essence here. You so can clearly smell the LA backdrop and that he actually loves living in Los Angeles. So I love the backstory of these perfumes and I kept on seeing these beautiful bottles pop up on the Violet Gray website. I love shopping at Violet Gray and I love visiting when I'm going to visit my daughter in LA, popping over to Violet Gray for some goodies. But I had never pulled the trigger until my friend, Angela, the owner of Lux Atelier Spa, she was in LA for a Biologique Recherche conference and she sent me pictures from Violet Gray and she's like, oh my goodness, you have got to get your nose on these perfumes. And I was squealing with delight because I was like, I've been looking at those for months. And unfortunately at the moment, they do not have sample sets. They did tell me they will be launching a sample set, I believe in mid-March, but basically you need to go to Violet Gray to get your nose on these beauties. And, so and Angela and Marissa were raving about this perfume and that I have got to give it a try. So needless to say, I have gone down the rabbit hole. I called Violet Gray, sort of walked through the fragrances that I already love. And I started out with one fragrance that I ordered and that is Canadian Tuxedo. And this is a sexy little thing. And then after talking to Jacqueline, she was telling me all about this magical combination that Daniel himself wears. So I went ahead and got Cosmic Cowboy as well. And I'm happy to report that I 
do not have any regrets. And I thought this might be helpful for any of you who have been kind of had your eye on this brand, you're curious about it. I thought I would just walk through all of the seven fragrances, kind of share my experience so far and hoping that you find this helpful. So first I want to point out that the attention to detail is literally in every part of the experience. So the perfumes are going to show up like this. And as you can see over here, there is a number on the back. This is the, I believe this is the 30th bottle out of only 50. So these are small batch perfumes. They are hand poured. They come in these super elegant glass bottles. This is a dabber. So you will take this off. And I have to tell you, I'm normally not somebody who likes dabber perfume, but these are a extract de parfum, super potent. <laughs> So a little dab will do you, like one on your pulse points, maybe a little bit behind your neck. You do not need a lot. So this is not something that I'm even going to really transfer into something to spray because these are actually little potent babies. And when I was putting these on, it was permeating the room. And I say this in a good way because these are also clean, sustainable, vegan perfumes. And if any of you have tried some of the cleaner version of perfumes, usually the complaint is that they do not have any longevity. Um, in these, the oil content is going to be super high. And I literally put this on, lasted all day long. So again, these have some nice longevity. This is not going to go poof and disappear, at least with the two that I have tried so far. Um, I found it to be actually one of those that gives you this really nice scent trail. Um, you're gonna smell it on yourself. Others are going to smell you. You may garner a few compliments. I will say the magical elixir combo. It's true, it's pretty magical. <laughs> and yes, these are an investment perfume. Each bottle is $425, but I honestly feel like you can smell the attention to detail in here, the ingredients, the way they are sourced and such. Um, they are sort of a wow fragrance. And again, a little is gonna go a long way. Okay, so this is not one of these perfumes that you want to douse. You actually wanna think less is more in this situation. Okay, then I'm just gonna show you, we're gonna open up the box just like this. And this is Canadian Tuxedo. And this is the one that I purchased after talking to Marissa. She literally was just going crazy over it. And I was like, oh, this sounds right up my alley. So again, here is Canadian Tuxedo. And here's the little card that comes with it. And I was attracted to this one because it has all of my favorite notes in here. It's got that warm amber. It's got tonka bean. That's one of my favorite notes. Little bit of orange flower, coriander, cedar wood, and Cistus Absolute. But the way that it is described is it says Canadian tuxedo is intoxicatingly casual, like denim on starlets, relaxed, fitted, flared, whatever, West Coast sartorial party wear, be seen wear, everyday wear, what you wear when you have nothing to hide. Sensual raw materials that generate warmth, cedar wood, tonka bean, cystus absolute, coriander, and orange flower, 
exotic amber. The tension between sultry and sophisticated, expressive, not heavy, no pretense, all persuasion. Now, one of the other concepts behind this perfume is called osmocosm. And osmocosm is the scent universe or the universe of scent. So each of these scents, the seven scents, has a different osmocosm time. And the Canadian tuxedo captures the 6 p.m. Hour. So this one is described as a relaxed amber fragrance with notes of warm spices and wood that creates a carefree sensuality. It's inspired by denim-clad Ryan Gosling in Drive, Brittany and Justin, and The Outsiders by Francis Ford Coppola. This extrait de parfum has a casual, soulful, laid-back cool factor like a perfectly broken in pair of jeans. Mm. This one really is very woody and warm and I was very attracted to the idea of like your best pair of broken in jeans that you can't get rid of because they're just so comfortable. I have a pair of those jeans that my family laughs about but I just love them. I cannot get rid of them. They just fit me perfectly. They are comfortable, broken in. And again, I tend to gravitate towards those warmer kind of sensual fragrances. And I would say that Canadian Tuxedo is definitely that. It is really woody. It is warm. Definitely unisex. This is not going to be super feminine leaning but it does have a touch of that orange flower in here just to give it a little slight femininity that I like. Mm. Again, the top notes in here are going to be coriander, orange flower, and bay leaf. The heart notes are gonna be cumin, patchouli, and cedar wood. And then the base notes are tonka bean, peru balsam, and cystus absolute. So normally, I have to be honest, I don't generally enjoy fragrances with cumin in it. Um, that sort of has a sharpness to it. There is no sharp notes in here. It is very smooth as it said, very laid back, comfortable, like what I'm wearing today just feels very comfortable. Um, this fragrance meshes really well with that. I'm wearing just a really soft top as well as my favorite jeans. And to me, this fragrance feels a bit sexy. So this is something that I would wear, of course, during the day, but I also could see someone wanting to put this on in the evening, kind of as a more sensual date kind of perfume. And this is where I became crazy because after talking to Jacqueline at Violet Gray, she was saying that she loves to wear cosmic cowboy and she is a beauty editor at Violet Gray who gets to smell pretty much all the good stuff, all the good perfumes. But she was saying that Cosmic Cowboy was sort of her day fragrance. And then at night, she might layer the two of these together and that it was just like magic. It is just such a beautiful combination. And I do have to say it is a wow combination. Now for myself, I think I'm going to reach more for Cosmic Cowboy on the day to day, um, which is funny because the way that it is described sounds like it's like debauchery. It, the inspiration comes from the nightclubs of the Sunset Strip in the 1970s. So this is a warm and spicy, musky fragrance. But on my skin chemistry, it has sort of almost a little bit of airiness and cleanness to it that I love. So Cosmic Cowboy is described as gender fluid. Definitely see that. It doesn't matter what team you play for. Star Spangled Cowboys, Chaps in Chaps, 
Sunset Strip in the 70s, neon and smoky clubs, the decadence of duality, rich mysterious notes of neon gobbinum, cinnamon bark, and orris butter. Definitely love the orris butter in here. A smoky aroma of decadent amber, Tuscan leather, black musks, and hot bodies. Velvety, honey-like, boozy. Intensity when you want to let go. I'm just going to show you how I do the dabber here. Do a little bit on the dabber here and then you can little bit here around the nape on the pulse points mm, so good then I'm gonna go ahead add one little boop right here mm, gosh and a little right here and mm, I'm literally high on life. I'm high on perfume and cannot get enough of this combination. Now there are seven of his babies, seven fragrances, and they're going to range from woody, spicy, fresh, floral, and citrus. So room number is going to be your woody scent. Your spicy fragrances are going to be Canadian Tuxedo and Cosmic Cowboy. Your florals are going to be either the Moonflower or the Rain d'Ange. And then your fresh fragrance would be somewhere really pretty second skin fragrance and then if you're somebody who loves citrus fragrances then that is going to be alone together. So I actually find room number to be sort of a sexy scent. There's a air of sophistication, like there's almost a touch of Chanel-esque in here for me. So it feels sexy, but also like very sophisticated. And you definitely need to like those warmer spices. Like you definitely smell that nutmeg. Um, the leather in here smells more suede-like to me. It is not necessarily like a handbag leather to me. There's a smoothness about this. And I am picking up on that milky musk. So, so this one is almost like a little bit like sex in a bottle for me. So if I had to describe this one would be definitely on the sexier side, warm, spicy. This one feels a bit indulgent definitely the sexiest one out of the bunch i think so hmm interesting one thing that i'm noticing throughout all of these i always try to give you fragrances that they may smell like or be in the same genre i've actually been having a little bit of a difficult time with these because they smell very unique to me they have some kind of similarities to things that i can't quite put my finger on like when i was smelling the woodiness of the canadian tuxedo i was like "Ooh, this sort of smells like something that i have i have a vast array of perfumes in in here but there's not one that I can like put my finger on and say oh if you like this you're going to love this I will continue to kind of work through the fragrances and if I can come up with those similarities I will definitely tell you but so far that's why I'm kind of saying wow because I can't quite put my finger on a specific fragrance these all smell very unique to me Okay, the first three I talked about so far are those warmer fragrances. Now we're going to move into a bit more of the floral fragrances. 
I'm gonna start with the Ray de Ange. This is an ode to Los Angeles, the queen of angels. And this is a very deep and sexy rose scent. So if you are a fellow rose lover, you are going to like this one. I can smell Turkish rose in here. Like this one is a very deep kind of dark, sexy rose scent. And yes, this one explores the darker side of the rose at its richest and most erotic. And this is a gorgeous rose scent. So I'm definitely getting that kind of jammy Turkish rose in here. I do smell some hints of saffron in here as well. So the top notes in here are Turkish rose, Moroccan rose, rose, saffron. The heart notes are geranium, angelica root, and ambrette seed. I'm somebody who loves ambrette. There's like a little bit of cleanness in ambrette. And then it's going to be patchouli, amber, vetiver, leather, and musk. So so I'm really loving this one because it is spicy. It is a bit fresh. There is this kind of jammy rose in here. I can smell a little bit of spice from that saffron, but there's definitely something a little bit like sparkly in here as well as a little bit dark and seductive. So I think if you are somebody who loves a rose scent, but you want a little bit of mysteriousness in here, I kind of think you're going to like this one. Again, um, the rose in here is definitely a bit more jammy. I'm kind of, it's not really like Oud Satin Mood from MFK. Uh, there's not exactly a rose scent that I have in my collection that is exactly like this. Um, I am getting that sort of jammy Turkish rose. I'm getting a little bit of the sparkly nature. And then there's that leather in here as well as some ambrette. And of course, it's got that patchouli in here. So a really beautiful rose patchouli fragrance definitely sexy as well. So for my rose lovers, I would definitely put your nose on this because I do feel like this is another one that is special and is going to create that cloud that I keep on talking about. Okay, we're going to move on to Moonflower and this might be the next one I want to pick up up. This one is going to be a floral fragrance. This one's so interesting because when you first put it on, it has this airiness, but now that it is dried down, um, the florals are starting to blossom and it's really quite beautiful. So this is a serene floral fragrance that's inspired by the night blooming flowers in the Hollywood Hills, conjuring lush orange blossom, tuberose, jasmine, and moon flower opening against the cool night sky. This aromatic scent combines sweet floral notes with grounding moss and patchouli for a balanced fragrance like a stem rooted in the earth. Mm. This is going to be for those of you that love tuberose and jasmine. I'm definitely smelling those two in here. So the top notes are cool air, blood orange, tuberose, and cardamom. I love that combination because again, sometimes tuberose fragrances can be a little bit like bubble gummy or a little bit too heady, but that cardamom is kind of laying down a little bit of warmth to the fragrance and kind of tamping that down. Then the heart notes are orange flower, moon flower, and night blooming jasmine. And then in the base, you've got this nice base in here with elemi, mosque, musk and patchouli. So this is my kind of floral because it's got that warmer base um, floral. Sometimes I love them, but some of them, if they're too heady, can kind of make my stomach turn. This one's got that yummy warm base that's going to kind of tamp those down, but there is this really nice airiness to this one, especially when you first put it on. Um, it sort of has an airy element and then it's drying down into that warmer kind of floral. Oh, so and then it's drying down to this really nice balanced floral. Mm, this is hard. This might be... <laughs> 
Hmm, this one might be my next. I'll have to see. Let me get through the rest of them. Okay, next we've got Somewhere, and this one's going to be for my, like, citrus lighter fragrance lovers. Hmm, this one's good too, you guys. Okay, this one's going to be your second skin fragrance that captures the feeling of sun bathing in a hidden tropical oasis. Refreshing like the sea, alluring like a flower in bloom, and sensual and grounding like the earth. This complex, enigmatic scent with bergamot, frangipani, and sandalwood conjures tranquility and enchantment. So the opening of this is very citrusy. It's got bergamot and blood orange as well as dewy palm leaves. The heart note's going to have lemon blossom, neroli, and frangipani. So you can start to feel that tropical vibe. Then it's got base notes of palo santo, patchouli, sandalwood, and skin musk. This one's going to be definitely for my more fresh lovers. I also think that although this is a tropical kind of lush scent, it's not over the top. So I would definitely say when it says it's second skin, this is going to just sort of mesh with your chemistry, kind of feel like one, but have that slight sort of almost suntan lotion, like you're on the beach and you've got that good smelling suntan lotion. It doesn't smell like that, but you get the idea. Like you're on the beach, you've got your suntan lotion on, you're someplace tropical, maybe you're even having like a little fruity cocktail, um, but this is not one that's like, whoa, tropical overload. It's going to be a little bit more subtle, kind of special for you. So that's what I would say. Sometimes there's fragrances that we just want to enjoy. And if you like citrus fragrances, I definitely think you're going to like this one. I had to double check if I picked up the wrong little dabber here because the last one is Alone Together. And this one is an ethereal and woody citrus pure perfume with unexpected carnal spice. So for those of you that love more of a citrusy green fragrance, I think this is going to be the one for you. This one starts off with citrus top notes. It's a fresh and spice. It has a fresh and spicy heart and green woody base. This is rich yet sparkling scent is effortlessly sensual with a complexity that'll leave them guessing. So in this one, I'm definitely smelling a little bit of that, like verbena is in here. It has Peruvian lime and red mandarin. So definitely citrusy and clean. In the heart notes, you've got pink pepper, basil, and a little bit of Jamaican pimento. In the base, you've got fresh lavender, super, vetiver, and patchouli. And as I've mentioned in many videos, uh, fragrances that have patchouli tend to be the ones that I get the most compliments on. <laughs> Not that you're always seeking compliments, but patchouli has a uniqueness it to it that really can make fragrances like a bit clean, a bit earthy. Um, there's just something that makes them a bit addictive. Um, and those are the ones I always tend to get compliments on. So out of all of these ones, I would definitely say this one is going to be the most citrusy fresh one. I know I was talking about somewhere. This one is a really nice, pretty, more feminine fragrance, I would say over here. These are all unisex, but if you're looking for something that's on that sort of lush floral, um, I would definitely say somewhere is going to be leaning more feminine and alone um, together is going to be that kind of citrusy invigorating scent. Okay. I'm a little bit high off perfume right now. As I said, these are very concentrated. Um, they just feel very luxurious. There is this definite special scent bubble. And I literally have to tell you, I really like all of these. Now, again, having lived in LA twice, there's something that he captured the essence of living there, even if I wasn't living in the hip parts. <laughs> 
of Los Angeles. Some of these scents just really brought me back to wanting to go to LA. So I need to make a little trip down to LA to see my daughter. It would be amazing to actually meet Daniel himself because he sounds like a fascinating person and I just love kind of the whole story behind how he created these fragrances. But today I just wanted to sort of introduce you to Perfume Head, kind of walk you through these special fragrances. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, these fragrances are exclusive to Violet Grey right now. Sample sets, I believe, are going to be launching in mid-March. But if you live in the LA area, I would run, not walk, over to Violet Grey get your nose on these and then report back. Let me know which one was your favorite. Um, I do want to note, I have been in town, tried to go to Violet Gray. It is closed on Sunday. So if you're somebody traveling, go on Saturdays. They're closed on Sundays, but it's a really fun place to go, especially if you love clean beauty. They have the best of the best. They curate all of their products. I've been a longtime fan of Violet Gray. Definitely got intrigued by this exclusive brand only at Violet Gray at the moment, um, but definitely worth checking out. And I am going to do a fun live with my friend, Angela Morgan, who owns Luxatilly A. Um, she was so excited that I got the samples. And so we are going to smell these all together and you can get her take on these fragrances as well. So that will be on Monday at 9 a.m. I'm going to be at Luxatilly A. We're going to do a little live stream sharing these perfumes and a few other of our favorite things going on right now. But thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a fabulous rest of your weekend.